Have no fear. Bedtime is here, boy. Hey, man. The real, the real goat of predictions is here. I know you've been waiting on my video all week. You've been listening to everybody talking about this fight, and you want to know, who am I picking in the main event? Because you know who I'm picking in the co-main event. That's why I put in the title and thumbnail. Stay tuned to the end to see who I'm picking in this main event, because I literally keep, keep changing every day. But I'm going to go through every single fight on the card, early prelims, all the way to the main event. I'm going to let you know the truth. I'm going I'm to leak the script and tell you who's going to win these fights, okay? This is a crazy hard card to predict. For some reason, this is like a really unpredictable card. I feel like we're going to get a lot wrong. So, first bout, we got Daniel Santos versus Johnny Munoz at Bantamweight. This is actually a pretty good fight. This is actually a, a pretty sick um, showcase at Bantamweight. I really like watching Daniel Santos fight. There is a worry for me that his style is not really conducive to winning consistently. But I am going to trust the team that he trains with. The fact that he's clearly got finishing abilities. I'm going to pick Santos to win this fight by round 2 or round 3 TKO. Um, starting off the night with a bang. And I think the odds reflect that. So I'm going to I'm gonna ride with Santos, okay? Middleweight bout. We got Joseph Holmes. This guy literally looks like the most UFC 3 created character I've ever seen. Not UFC 4. UFC 3, career mode, real ones, no. This guy was ranked in UFC 3. I swear to God he was in the game, bro. This guy literally, the tattoos as well, the fucking mustache, you know, facial hair, seven looking ass boy. Um, but yeah, we got Joseph Holmes versus Claudio Ribeiro. All right, I picked against Ribeiro last fight. I'm a bit of a genius. Uh, you know, I picked Zach Al Hassan uh, because I thought Claudio Ribeiro is a bit sloppy and he's not really uh, super technical. He seems like he's he's very wide open to being hit, but I don't think Joseph Holmes, Joseph Holmes is the type of finisher that's gonna you know crack him on the chin. I don't see Joseph Holmes as the type of guy that's gonna crack him with a really sharp shot, drop him, and finish him the way that Rizaka Hassan I thought he could. Um, I think Joseph Holmes' best chance is to maybe get a decision win if Ribeiro gasses himself trying to finish him. Uh, but other than that, I think I'm gonna lean with Ribeiro by KO. Round two or round three, I think it's going to be um, probably round two. Round one or two, actually. I don't think it's going to be round three. I'm going to say round one or two KO for Claudio Ribeiro um, is my pick in the middleweight division. But you never know at middleweight, right? It's it's dog shit division. Okay, Claudio Ribeiro, great fighter, going to fucking lose. Okay, huge, huge guys at middleweight. Terrible fighters, fucking bums. Okay, GM3 smokes them all. Okay. Moving on, okay, we got the flyweight division. We got Rafael Estevam versus Zalgas Zumagulov, coconut head from fucking Ned's Declassified over here. There's just too many ways for Estevam to win this fight, in my opinion, because I think even if Zalgas Zumagulov wins this by decision, he's gonna lose on the scorecards. You know what I'm saying, bruh? So I feel like if I pick Zumagulov, he's gonna win, but then get robbed on the scorecards. Whereas if I pick Estevam, like, he's probably going to KO him, or he gets a robbery decision, and either way, that's a free W for me. So, I'm going to pick Rafael Estevam, just because I feel like the judges are more likely to give it to him if this goes to a decision, regardless of what actually happens. I personally don't give a fuck. But I do think Estevam either KOs him, or he wins a robbery decision. So, it's either going to be a KO, maybe a round two, you know, round one, round two KO, or it's going to be a, a split decision W for Estevam. Moving on to the middleweight division. Oh, this is a tough one, bro. This is a tough one, dude, because it's like either Phil Hawes wins and looks good or he gets absolutely destroyed. He is so, like, inconsistent, bro. This guy is fucking crazy to watch fight. Um, Ikram Eleskarov. I don't really know anything about this dude. I'm going to be straight up with you, bro. Um, the Eleskarov dude. Uh, I don't really know. I'm going to pick him to win by KO. Round one. Fuck it. He's Russian. Phil Hawes is... If this guy has any power whatsoever, Phil Hawes is fucked. So, I'm going to trust that this guy has a monocule of, of power in his hands. Moving on. We got that early prelim headliner. We got Parker Porter. <laughs> Back to the barnyard. We got the barnyard, the king of the barnyard versus Braxton Smith. Okay, I saw a picture of Braxton Smith. He looks like a stretched out Yo Romero. Pause. Um... But I don't know, dude. This guy's really not that good. Like, they're both terrible. Like, Braxton Smith's not really that good. I feel like he's got good power. But I can just see Parker Porter winning a decision W and making everybody else rage. That's picking Braxton Smith by round one KO. 
Um, either that happens, like he KOs Parker Porter, and it's like, oh, okay, yep, should have picked him. Or I feel like if it if this fight leaves round one, Parker Porter's getting the W by decision. I genuinely think he's going to just wrestle this guy. So I'm picking Parker Porter, Parker Piggy Porter, Porter by decision. Okay, I feel bad. <laughs> But fuck me, bro. There is not many people on earth that fit that description as well as Parker Porter. Very rotund gentleman he is. Moving on. We're speaking of gentlemen. Verna Jandy. <laughs> we got Marina Rodriguez versus Verna Jandy Jandy Doba. I believe is the pronunciation. I feel like I'm pretty good at the pronunciation. Anyways, Marina Rodriguez versus Verna Jandy Doba. I'm gonna pick. I almost want to pick Janji Doba by a decision because I feel like Marina Rodriguez's takedown defense is not really that good. Her jiu-jitsu defense is very good. She showed that against Mackenzie Dern. She can grapple, but she is susceptible to being taken down. And I don't know. I think I'm going to pick Marina Rodriguez by decision. I think she's got better power, better striking. And I trust her a little bit more based on the competition that she's beaten and she's faced. Like... She was on the verge of a title shot, like Guru said in his video. Um, I think Marina Rodriguez was on the verge of a title shot. I actually rate Rodriguez quite highly, but if she gets taken down early and often, then I think Janji Doba is going to win by decision. But I'm going to trust Rodriguez to get get her shots in, get the decision uh, W, 29-28. So that's my pick, Rodriguez. So early prelims, I've got Parker Porter. I've got Al Aliskarov. I've got Estevam. I've got Ribeiro, and I've got Santos. Okay, now on the pre, I saw I saw the big dog. I saw him. I got jump scared by the fucking big dog, bro. Well to wait, bout. We got Chaos Williams versus Rolando Bedoya, dude. Apparently, this Rolando Bedoya dude trains with uh fucking Charles Oliveira. I didn't even know that. Um, Chaos Williams gonna KO this dude in like a minute. Honestly, I feel like Chaos Williams gonna KO this guy pretty early. Um, not really much to say, dude. Let's go, Chaos Williams. Get this W, bro. Moving on, we've got a light heavyweight bout. We've got Kennedy and Zetchuku versus Devin Clark. Ooh. Now, Kennedy and Zetchuku has looked really good lately. I mean, he KO'd Carlos Oberg. That's a pretty good W for him. And, you know, his last win against uh, Ion Kutilaba, pretty good win for him as well. Really, like, he loses early, then he finds a way back into the fight, and he KOs them. He's really improved his striking, I would say. And probably his cardio as well. It seems like he's... He's a lot more measured with his striking, a lot more accurate as of late. But at the same time, I think Devin Clark is actually a pretty tough guy to beat. And knowing MMA math, somehow Enzechuku will KO Kutalaba, but then get decisioned by Devin Clark. So I'm going to take the underdog here. I'm going to go Devin Clark by decision. I'm going to say Devin Clark wrestles him the last two rounds, or maybe round one and then round three he wrestles him and gets a 29-28 decision. Very close decision, I would say, if it goes to the scorecards. Uh, I'm going to say Devin Clark by decision, but if not, he's getting KO'd by Enzechuku in round two. So I'm leaning Devin Clark, but I can see the Enzechuku round two KO coming, honestly. Lightweight bout, headliner of the prelims. We've got Drew Dilber. All right. Protect your knees. We've got Matt Frivola. I like Matt Frivola, dude. I almost picked him. I had Matt Frivola like, highlighted as the person I was going to pick in this fight all week. And then I've kind of changed it because... I feel like Drew Dober is not shit enough to where he will lose to Matt Frivola. Um, I feel like Otmar Zaitar kind of walked himself into that KO. He was very skittish. He kind of reminded me of Ponzinibbio versus Lee Jingliang in the way that he was very cautious and kind of just like nervous, like very clearly off his game, not him, not the version that we last saw before he took all that time off um, for his fucking potato sack. Whereas Drew Dober, he's, fr he's active, he's fresh, you know, I feel like he's pretty sharp, especially early on. I don't see him uh, walking into a big punch like that. He does get wobbled sometimes. I think they will wobble each other at some point. But if I'm having to pick who's got more power and who's probably more likely to get a KO, I'm going to say it's Drew Dober. And unless Matt Frivola wrestles him, I'm going to pick Drew Dober by round two or round three TKO. Um, either drops him with a hook and finishes him on the ground or maybe a body shot. But I'm going to pick Drew Dober to get the W in this fight. And uh, move on to bigger and better things like Michael Johnson. Honestly, I think Michael Johnson is his next victim, bro. So I'm picking Drew Dober to get the W. Why am I developing like a blocked nose in the middle of this video? I don't know, but I'm picking Drew Dober to win this by KO round two or round three. So I've got Drew Dober. I've got Devin Clark. I've got Chaos Williams. I've got Marina Rodriguez. 
uh, on the prelims. Wow, four prelim fights. Good work, UFC. Moving on to the featherweight division. Oh, my God. We've got the Crown Gracie dude versus Charles Jordan. Okay, Charles Jordan, I guess, is the proper pronunciation. You know, she's your stepsister, bro. She's not related to you. And I don't know what to pick. I really don't know what to pick because I feel like either way I'm going to feel stupid. And that's a running theme on this main card is I feel like no matter what pick I make, I'm going to be wrong. Um, so I'm just going to say fuck it. Crone Gracie round one submission. Fuck it, dude. I don't give a fuck. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it, bro. I'm going to say he catches him cold. Charles Jordan comes in, starts off doing well, puts himself in a bad spot, gets submitted. I, I don't know. I just have a, this weird feeling that Crone Gracie would not be coming back if he didn't think he could win. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't get... He strikes me as the type of dude that's, like, not here just... Ran, like, it's such a random fucking return. And the odds are telling me that it's, like... People must know something if he's this, like, this close in odds-wise to Charles Jordan, who's been active, who's had some good wins in the UFC. Not super consistent either which I think does benefit Crone Gracie, but I don't know, bro. Like, he beat fucking Alex Caceres quite easily as well. Like, I know that was a couple years ago, but, that, like, that's a good win, bro. I don't know. I'm not picking this based on I think Crone Gracie is better, but I do think Charles Jordan is not that good. Like, you know, I definitely think he's a step below those guys just outside the rankings, like Quarantillo or, you know, somebody like that, right? Like a, like a Landwehr or Caceres. He's not in that category. Um... And I think Crone Gracie was in that category when we last saw him. So unless he's regressed crazily, I feel like he'll be more refreshed. His striking will probably be better, hopefully. Um, you know the jiu-jitsu is always going to be there. So I'm going to ride with the underdog here. Maybe it's a risky pick. I'm going to say Crone Gracie round one submission. Fuck it, bro. I could be completely wrong, but I'm going to pick him. Featherweight bout again. We've got Movsa Evluev versus Diego Lopez, who looks like he just smelled the worst shit of his life. Like, does he not look like that in the face, bro? Why does he look like that, dude? Um, why is he black and white like he's died as well? Like, I don't, look, all right, enough questions. Movsa Evluev's going to finish this dude in the first round. End of story. End of discussion. That's it. Good boy. You had your chance in the UFC. You got finished in round one. That's it, you know? At best, round two finish. At best, it's a round two finish for Evluev. Maybe I'm cursing him right now, but I'm going to say round two. Round one finish for Evluev, bro. If, he's, if he is who we think he is, he finishes this dude in round one. But maybe Lopez has a really good ground game. He makes it to round two and then just gets overwhelmed. Just too much to think about from Evloev. But I think Evloev's going to get the finish in this fight. Moving on, we got the women's strawweight co uh, featured fight. Imagine if this was the co-main event. Holy fuck. Featured bout. We've got Jessica Andrade versus Yan Janan. Sorry, I didn't know if I wanted to do Janan first or Yan first. I'm going to say Yan Janan. Um... Pretty good fight, I would say, in terms of rankings. Makes a lot of sense. Um, Jessica Andrade back at strawweight is interesting. you got to think about the fact this is not flyweight. Like, she's jumping around divisions a lot, which may indicate she's kind of looking for motivation. She's kind of looking for somewhere to fit in in the UFC. Maybe that'll help Yan Jianan to get a decision win. She looked pretty good in her last fight against Mackenzie Dern. But at the same time, I feel like we can all agree Jessica Andrade is a better wrestler than Mackenzie Dern. Way better striker, way more power. Um, you know, has similar finishing ability, not like in terms of jujitsu, but I feel like she's just as potent of a finisher as Mackenzie Dern is on the ground, uh, on the feet. Like Jessica Andrade has a really good chance to KO someone and you don't really get that in these women's fights. So I feel like there's just more tools on Jessica Andrade's side. I think Jan Jonan has to get a decision win versus Jessica Andrade who could get a submission or get a decision win or get a KO. So I'm picking Jessica Andrade to win this fight by either decision or maybe a round two, round three submission. Honestly, I'm feeling a submission happening in this fight. So I'm going to pick Jessica Andrade though. Why is her head so fucking big? Anyways, co-main event, boy. Hey, man. Ah, look, dude. Look, dude. I actually want to pick Gilbert Burns by KO. I actually think that's probably what's going to happen. But I feel like I would be going against everything that this channel is about and everything that you know about me if I didn't say that Bilal Muhammad is going to destroy Gilbert Burns um, via 48-47 via split decision, okay? I think Bilal Muhammad actually has a really good chance in this fight. Now, a lot of people, Lucas Tracy has come out and said 
that Gilbert Burns, and I quote, has to slip on a banana peel to lose this fight. I think that is fucking crazy, dude. You're telling me that Gilbert Burns, who has a history of cardio issues versus Gil- Bilal Muhammad, who is on EPO or steroids or something like that, clearly, who just outpaced Sean Brady and broke him in two rounds. I don't give a fuck that he's terrible. We did not think that going into that fight. Bilal Muhammad made him look terrible. Bilal Muhammad has a sneaky one-two. If he gets hit with a big shot, you know he's not going down because besides the Vicente Luque KO, Bilal Muhammad actually has a pretty good fucking chin. Look at the head kick he ate off Leon Edwards, right? That didn't even fucking drop him, right? Look at all the shots he ate from Vicente Luque in their second fight. They didn't drop him. Look at all the shots he ate from Jeff Neal and his loss to Jeff Neal. His loss to Jeff Neal. I don't give a fuck that he lost to Jeff Neal. That's that's okay. The shots that he got hit with, the fact that he did not get KO'd, tells me this guy is in crazy shape. He has a good chin. He's tough as nails. He's going to keep going. And if Gilbert Burns can't finish this guy or get him to quit the way that Jorge Masvidal kind of like withered as that fight went on because he's old and he's washed and I don't know why we're so impressed that Gilbert Burns beat him like I picked Jorge Masvidal as like a I know he has no chance but I feel like weirdly he'll match up against Gilbert Burns well right and I feel like Prime Masvidal would but at the same time now that I've seen that fight it's like oh yeah he's washed as fuck and has been he he has been washed as fuck like Colby even against Colby he looked washed as fuck bro so you've beat Masvidal and Magni bro but whenever I make picks like that, they're wrong. So I will say Gilbert Burns will probably win this fight by KO. However, if it gets past the second round and into that third and that fourth, I feel like we could see a, a Bilal Muhammad decision or round four, round five TKO via ground and pound in this fight. I really do. I really feel like there's a chance here for a late Bilal Muhammad TKO. I have this weird feeling Bilal Muhammad might win this fight. I'm going to say on record, I think Gilbert Burns will probably win this fight. However, if it hits 3, 4, and 5, watch the live odds change. Watch Gilbert Burns' demeanor change. Watch his speed change. Watch Bilal Muhammad's pace change. Right? I don't know, man. I think people are really underestimating Bilal. The people that are picking Gilbert Burns, like round 1 KO, round 2 KO, I feel like you're, you're underestimating Bilal. He has to do that to beat Bilal. He has to KO Bilal inside too. Otherwise, I feel like he's going to lose. So that's what I think of that fight. Official prediction, Gilbert Burns by KO early. Otherwise, Bilal Muhammad decision. If it leaves round two, change my fucking pick to Bilal Muhammad decision. Okay? That's the truth. Main event. Why does Henry Cejudo literally look 12 years old in this? He looks like a 12-year-old that got sent to his room and he's like looking at you in the doorway like this before he leaves. Like, bruh. Anyways, main event time. Got Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo. I have changed my mind on this fight like 14 fucking times. I cannot pick this this fight, bro. I feel like if I change what my gut pick is, like my initial gun in my head, first time I saw it announced, my pick, if I change it, it'll be wrong. Usually when I go with my, my gut, like my first initial pick, it's usually right. Right? John Jones, Cyril Gunn. All the arguments were for Gunn, but I was like, I don't know, I just feel like Jones is going to win. My initial thought was, yeah, Jones wins that, right? Same thing here. I think Aljo wins. I don't know. I don't know. I think Aljo wins. At the end of the day, I think Aljo wins. I've swayed back and forth to Team Henry, Team Aljo. Um, Fight week always plays tricks on me, right? Like, I see them together and I go, oh, fuck, Aljo's nervous. But then I'm like, oh, they're both cringy as fuck. I can't really read them, right? I think Aljo Mate Sterling is going to get this one done by either a TKO or a decision. I think it's either early TKO for Aljo or it's a decision. That's my pick. I think Suhudo is low-key underestimating his striking. And I think there's a potential there to be taken down off a leg kick, off a body kick from, from Suhudo, right? To get tangled up in how long Aljo is. Mid mid combination, mid kick with a leg kick as, as well. Um, you know, maybe forced into a scramble. And I think Aljo will get the back at some point. I think he'll get rounds off the back. And here's what I think is going to happen. I think Aljo is going to be evasive. But I think when when Henry comes to him, I think Aljo is going to land big shots in close with the hands. I think he's really been working on his hands. And I, Aljo, everything Aljo has been saying, he thinks he's going to KO Cejudo. I feel like everything Aljo has said indicates to me that he thinks he can KO Henry Cejudo. Um, 
And let me just talk about the game plans that I think is going to happen. I think Aljo's game plan in this fight is to kick at range, throw up the head kicks, throw leg kicks, uh, front kicks as well. You know, if Henry Cejudo catches him and tries to take him down, like, I feel like a scramble will happen straight away. I feel like Aljo will throw up submissions off his back. So I feel like he'll be more kick heavy than maybe Henry is ready for because Henry is putting that idea in his mind. And in all of our minds, he's talking about wrestling. He's like, I'm going to wrestle. I'm an Olympic wrestler. I'm going to take you down. You'll never wrestle with anybody like me. I think he wants Aljo to not want to go to the ground in this fight. And I think that's pretty smart on Sudo's part. He's a very smart guy. But I think Aljo's game plan is probably on the feet, right? I think he's going to mix in the takedowns, obviously. I think if he gets the back, he'll keep it and try and finish him and try and hold him. But I feel like Aljo is pretty confident in feeling a KO happening in this fight. I feel like Aljo is going to kick... Kick at range, and when Henry gets in close, I feel like he's going to be winging really big punches, like Aljo. I feel I feel like Aljo is going to be winging really big punches. Um, I see hooks really working well against Cejudo, um, trying to be quick with his punches and really back Cejudo up, get Cejudo out of the pocket, put him back at kicking range. Um, yeah, I think he's going to mix in the takedowns, obviously, but I do believe Aljo is going to be hunting for a KO in this fight. Maybe to his detriment, or maybe it works. Maybe it, it sets up the takedown and the finish perfectly. Maybe he catches Cejudo coming in. Maybe he surprises Cejudo. Um, but I think Aljo is going to be aggressive on the feet compared to usual where he's quite passive and quite quite evasive. I think he's going to be aggressive, dude. I think he's going to be coming after Cejudo maybe more than he's ready for. As for Cejudo, I feel like he's going to be leg kicking a lot, obviously. I think he's also coming for the KO. I think he's going to try and set up a knee to the face. I get this feeling that Cejudo wants to KO Aljamain Sterling with a knee, um, force him into a bad shot. Catch him with the knee on the inside. Catch him with the uppercut. Put him against the fence. I feel like he really wants to finish him against the fence if he's going to do it. Um, and I feel like once things start to go bad for Cejudo, like maybe the takedowns, the scrambles are kind of dead even. They're both kind of like, all right, we're not going to really go to the ground yet. Um, or maybe he has a bad round with Aljo on his back and he has to change his game plan. I feel like Henry's going to go full Marlon Marais mode. He's going to walk. He's trying to going to try and walk Aljo down. I think he's going to go really aggressive. He's going to try and walk him down, try to clinch him, trying to beat him up with knees, and I think he's going to try and wrestle him way more. Um, I feel like if Henry Cejudo is losing this fight, he will turn into a wrestler. That's what I think is going to happen. I think Henry's going to start out super patient. I think Aljo will surprise him on the feet, maybe land some big shots, maybe hurt him with something, um, maybe have a round where he takes his back, round two. right? I think Aljo maybe, maybe will go up two rounds, or maybe it'll be 1-1, one, and I think Henry Cejudo will feel it changing. And he'll just go straight wrestling mode. He'll just go, bro, this guy cannot stop me from taking him down. I'm an Olympian. You know, I can rely on my toughness. If I walk in, he's not going to knock me out. And I don't know, bro. I feel like Aljamain Sterling has more kind of, I don't know. I feel like Aljamain Sterling's build and his style is perfectly suited to beat Cejudo. I feel like he's going to really frustrate Henry. And I feel like he's going to surprise him with his striking and then deter him with his grappling. So I'm picking Aljamain Sterling to win this fight. Either by a shocking like KO, maybe a TKO. I don't think he's going to knock Henry out cold, but I'm picking an Aljamain Sterling TKO or a decision, bro. That's my picks. All right, maybe maybe surprising, but let me know what you think down below, boys. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Give me your picks. I want to hear them, All right? Especially about this co-main event and this main event. What do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know. Make sure you drop a like on this video, boys, because I love doing these videos. I love the community reaction to my videos, bro. And make sure you subscribe as well, dude. We're already at 4.1K. We just hit 4K like a day ago. So I appreciate all the support, boys. Let's try and get to 5K soon. And yeah, bro. Have a good one. See you in the next video. Goodbye.